Bueno, de hecho el año 2006 es uno de los que más marcó el tema de la resistencia. Cuando hacen dan en ro, nos echó gases, nos disparó. En ese tiempo yo tenía 13 años. ¿Hasta cuándo van a estar? Hasta cuando nos digan ya no hay esperanzas, hasta cuando nos digan se acabó todo. Creo que ahí será cuando dejemos de luchar. Mientras tanto, seguimos. I live in northwest Ecuador in an area called Intag, in Babura province. It's a cloud forest habitat. Uh, and I've lived here uh, almost 44 years. I live in an area known as Tropical Andes, which is the most biodiverse of the world's biodiversity hotspots. So far, we've identified 69 species of animals and plants in danger of extinction, including one of the most threatened primates in the world. In order to protect my land from someone that was invading the land and killing spectacle bears, which is a protected species, back in the early 1990s, I formed a local group of uh, the equivalent of volunteer park rangers. So the idea was for me to educate these young people the importance of conserving what little there is or there was at that time. And then, like three years later, we found out that there was some people mining in this area called Huning. And at that moment, we decided that we needed to create a larger organization to confront the mining threat. And that was the impetus to create the COIN, Defensa y Conservación Ecológica de Inta. Uh, subsidiary Mitsubishi was here in the 1990s. At that time, Mitsubishi was the most powerful corporation in the world. Actually, they were invited by the Ecuadorian government to help them identify the mining potential of the country. We got a whole environmental impact study and we went from community to community talking about what the impacts would be for an area like this. The rivers will be contaminated with heavy metals. Endangered species will be impacted. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. To make room for the mine, four communities would have to be relocated. So that started the resistance, that awareness. With this environmental awareness, the uh, communities got together and tried to talk to the government and, and tell them that they don't want mining. The government, as is the case in many countries like this, didn't really give a damn what the communities thought, which is still the case, unfortunately. Seven communities came together. They formed a committee, and they, they had enough. They took out all, all the equipment from the mining camp, and they burned down the mining camp. And that was enough for Mitsubishi. We had seven years of relative peace. That inspired us to buy land for the communities that were sitting right above the copper deposit. Most people would get their water from pastures or agricultural sites that were being sprayed by really heavy duty chemicals. Communities came to us and said, please help us conserve where our water comes from. And we started with Huning, and uh, now we have 38 reserves all over Intan. So many protected areas are in the hands of communities. Most of the 38 community reserves that we buy are forested with native habitats. There's a few that were completely deforested, so we also helped establish nurseries for the communities themselves to grow the trees. And we got enough funding for reforestation. 
mostly with native species. In some cases, we just fenced off cows and allowed natural regeneration, which I believe is best. The thing that works long term is community participation. Communities need to feel a need to conserve certain areas. Otherwise, you can have all the nice laws in the world, but you have a different government come in and they can change it. It's happened here. And so far it's worked. We have um, about 12,000 hectares protected by local communities. We don't own the land, and that's also a key. We turn everything over to local governments or directly to communities. So when the Canadians came in 2004, we were much more organized. In 2004, they tried to carry on where Mitsubishi left off. And they couldn't because there was so much opposition. The death threats started, uh, the defamation campaigns against the main people in, in opposition. They were still unable to reach their mining concessions. They got desperate at one point and they hired um, paramilitaries to try to go in. They went in there with tear gas, machetes, and attack dogs. And again, they were turned back, even though they shot at people. And we sued the Toronto Stock Exchange for human rights abuse. Eventually, that Canadian mining company left. We're now up against the world's largest copper producer, Codelco from Chile. They were able to violently go into the, the community reserve that we bought for them. They went in with 400 police and military. And they established camp with police protection and they started exploration. They did so for four years. They already ruined 700 hectares of this beautiful forest, contaminated streams, logging ancient forests, uh, ancient trees. A lot of mining companies actually pretend that exploration work do not affect the environment. Well, with the results of our monitoring process, we have proved that it's not the case. What we have observed is that the water has tend to acidify during the exploration campaign. Heavy metal concentrations, especially zinc concentration, uh, copper concentration and arsenic concentration, raised a lot during the, the time the company was doing the, uh, the works in this area. We have a total of at least 120 platforms right now that have been drilled up to a depth of 1,200 meters. And Codelco actually is in the process of getting a permit to keep on with this exploration campaign and it has asked uh, the government to let her do, I think, a few dozens of more uh, drilling platforms. So we have a small uh, area in the upper part of the catchment. It's a uh, primary forest and then it's part of the margin of the reserve, which is called Kotakachikaya Pass, which is a, a national park and it's directly connected to it. The communities, uh, with the help of organizations like ours, have stopped them. They left four years ago, and there has been no mining activities whatsoever. We helped four communities uh, present constitutional lawsuit to stop mining based on the rights of communities to be consulted about what goes on in their territory and also for the rights of nature. Sabemos que Eh, tenemos derechos y, eh, y uno de ellos es nuestro derecho a la resistencia. ¿Por qué resistimos? Porque queremos vivir en un ambiente sano, libre de contaminación. Los gobiernos están concesionando y, y eso es una preocupación. Una vez que empezaran alguna empresa a explotar, se van arrasando todo lo que encuentren. Tenemos ya pocos espacios de bosques primarios y la idea es protegerle. We won the first time around that mining would violate the rights of nature. Nature is not just an object, but it is a subject to right. We lost at the appeals because the 
the judge was new and she made a procedure error. So eventually it ended up in the um, appeals court, the, the provincial court, and it's been there almost a year. I think once I see such a stunningly beautiful forest, such diversity, pristine rivers and streams and waterfalls everywhere, there's no way, if there are decent people, that they will rule in favor of the government. If Codelco and the government win at the appeals court, they could start mining. People ask me, as an activist, how I can be doing this 28 years later. For most activists burn out after five, 10 years. And it's because I have this very strong connection to nature. But luckily there are enough young people now that are still resisting. Mi nombre es Senaida Huachamira. Estoy en esta lucha prácticamente desde que nací y no pienso dejarla. ¿Cómo el gobierno permite eso? Nos pone una concesión minera encima de un sitio tan biodiverso. You definitely lose part of yourself to these fights, but you also gain this other beautiful aspect of nature that somehow nature appreciates what you're doing. Las empresas mineras nos quieren atropellar, van comprando conciencias y nunca lo han de lograr. Lucharé día a día y sé que triunfaré por amor a la vida, mi sangre derramaré.